It's really this simple. If this team, if these players, if this manager has any hopes of playing Champions League football for next season, winning the Champions League is our best bet. Of course, it sounds impossible. It sounds very difficult. But you're boosting your hopes. You're bringing some faith. You're, you're restoring some positivity. If these guys can secure a comeback win against Borussia Dortmund, for Graham Potter, if there was one game in particular this season to restore more faith and trust behind his management, his decision making, his leadership, a comeback win against Borussia Dortmund can take this guy a very long way. But I'm not going to stand here and act entitled. For me, this is a challenge. I want to see if these guys are ready for this challenge because everything's working against us right now. But we're Chelsea Football Club, man. Like, when things are going against us, this is when our team really shines. This is when our team really shows what Chelsea spirit is really about. As I'm saying this, we have to respect Borussia Dortmund. Since the turn of 2023, they have won 10 games in the bounce. That is a mad win streak. They're one of the best teams during the start of this new year in Europe right now. They're currently level on points with Bayern Munich at the top of the Bundesliga. And if there's one thing that Borussia Dortmund have shown me, team comes of individuals. Like if you compare our individual players to Dortmund's players, most of our players are way better and barely any Dortmund players get in our team. But football is not about the individual, football is about the team. The team is greater than the sum of its parts. And Dortmund have shown that with desire, willpower, players that complement each other, great understanding and of course having like a strong core that has been at this club for a while now. Any team can go a long way if all those factors are in place with the added benefit of having some incredible form right now. Now what I'm about to say is going to sound quite mad, but you know last week I did have a dream that we beat Napoli 6-2 on aggregate in the quarterfinals of this year's Champions League. So if there was ever a time for one of my dreams to be manifest into real life, I I'm hoping we do something against Dortmund tomorrow and then let's see what happens later on. After that first leg performance against Dortmund, I feel like there shouldn't be any fear in our performance because on a better day, I think we comfortably win that first leg. I mean, the amount of times we hit the post, some of the incredible misses we made, the desperate defending from Borussia Dortmund as well too. We really peppered them and we saw this more in the second half, but one small mistake from a set-piece routine where Adeyemi was isolated against Enzo Fernandes. And that was that. Now, one player in particular who's been one of the key players for Dortmund during the start of this new year has been their goalkeeper in Kobo. This guy's been putting in some incredible match-saving performances over the past few games. Right now, we're still learning and trying to understand whether he takes part in tomorrow's game, but you'd imagine that Dortmund are doing everything in their power to bring this guy back in the team. There's been some great defending from guys like Sula and Schlotterbeck who've put in some great, incredible, last-ditch defensive tackles that have kept their team in. If there was one game in particular that could be a potential defining point for Borussia Dortmund, that was their recent 2-1 win against RB Leipzig because in that second half, Borussia Dortmund absolutely suffered. It was kind of similar to how we played the first leg game against them. And in the end, they showed they have the intangibles in their game. That desire, work rate, a little bit of luck which you create for yourself if you're applying yourself perfectly in game. And if Dortmund were to win the Bundesliga this season, I think a lot of their fans are going to look back at their last win against RB Leipzig. But for me, seeing that game, I had like a bit of a different perspective. I'm looking at this Dortmund run and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way this can continue on forever. I'm seeing little cracks right now where if your goalkeeper is one of your highest rated players, if you're constantly conceding shots left, right and centre, this is not sustainable. So tomorrow night, if we get factors on point, if the manager comes in the right system, if the players are ready for the challenge, if the players are composed in those key, you know, tight moments that we need these guys to be composed in, I feel at home we can do anything. But of course, it's a lot easier standing here saying that. For me, it's up to the team right now to show these guys are up for the challenge. In today's important match preview, because this could be the last Champions League match preview of the season, I'm going to go through my predicted lineup. I'll go through team news. I'll go through the key talking points from the press conference and I'll give my prediction right in the end. So before I get into things, I need everyone right now, because you know I'm superstitious. I hold my hands up, yeah? Right now, we need all the luck. I need all you guys to hit that like button. Let's go over 2K likes and without wasting any more time. So let's start with team news. And currently, Mason Mount, of course, is suspended after picking up a yellow card in the first leg. 
but I don't think it really makes a difference because he does have a current injury with his abdomen. Not too serious, but he needs a bit more time before he comes back in the team. We have some decent news though. It does seem like Reese James should be available, but we're going to get this confirmation tomorrow. So let's cross our fingers that Reese James is going to be back because in a must win game like this, you need all your key guys together. On more positive news though, N'Golo Kante is finally having his first proper first team training session. And I kind of feel like with Kante, we need to make sure we look after this guy so much. As I've said over the years, we've constantly just kind of abused him and taken him for granted because he does have ridiculous fitness. But this season, I like the approach we're doing of slowly easing him back. It seems Kante prefers this as well too because when Kante returns, I want this guy to be fully ready. I don't want a half fit Kante. Let him slowly come back and I'm sure if we can win this game tomorrow, having Kante for the latter stages of the season could feel like a new signing. Obviously, with other team news, Pulisic is also returning back. He could be in contention for tomorrow's game as well too. And of course, guys like Aspilicueta, Thiago Silva and the Mendy, the usual suspects, won't be taking any part because they're still injured. So, so that's team news out of the way. Let's now discuss the key talking points from the press conference. And today, Porter was joined by Jao Felix. And there were some interesting things that come from this. Uh, starting with Graham Porter. We have got confirmation that Kai Havertz is set to take over from Jorginho now when it comes to penalty duties. And for me, I think it makes a lot of sense. We can't forget when we won the Club World Cup, it was a Havertz penalty in the end that secured that. Uh, the guy is very composed in these areas. I know his finishing boots in his 1v1 game has been quite poor, but I'm hoping that from the penalty spot at least, if it comes down to that, we can rely upon Kai Havertz. On more positive news, it does seem like we have a confirmation now that we are set to use a 3-4-3 in tomorrow's game. I mean, there could be a possibility that Porter is trying to do something tactical in the press conference. Maybe he's fooling Dortmund into thinking, okay, we're going to play with wingbacks and then tomorrow we play like 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. Time is going to tell. But I think right now, 3-4-3 is the formation to use in the game tomorrow. Uh, Porter talks about things in this press conference today, like the mood in the team right now, like the atmosphere. Obviously, beating Leeds United, a historic rival, brought some much-needed confidence back into the team and some good vibes and good mentality. The players seem very motivated for the game tomorrow, so let's hope that we see that motivation turn into a win. So right now, let's discuss Joe Felix, and I guess to start with the first one, obviously, we all understand is Felix set to remain here after his loan spell. Uh, obviously, in typical footballer fashion, they're not going to be that honest in a press conference, as he said. Uh, you know, we don't know what the future holds right now. I'm only focused on the game tomorrow. But what I can say is that I'm loving it here right now. I'm, I'm very happy. I feel support for my teammates. And Joe Felix was another player to show support towards uh, the process and the manager by saying that, listen, you know, defeats aren't solely on anyone. Defeats are collective. It's all our faults. And, and I guess that is fair because if a lot of these guys had more composure in certain situations, some of these results are completely different. Joe Felix said that in the game tomorrow. You don't want to feel the pressure. If we do the right things we know we can do, if we're comfortable and composed, we can get a result. It's about enjoying these games so you can play your best football. And it's about having a good mentality in the game tomorrow. And of course, you know, Joe Felix said that there is like a personal desire for him to win this game tomorrow because he loves playing Champions League football. He wants to remain in this tournament. And of course, when he signed for us, you know, one of the reasons why he signed for us was that we do have Champions League football. So right now, Joe Felix, if you're finishing boots from point in the first leg, this second leg looks completely different. If there's one player that I need to see really up to the challenge after having a really decent performance against Leeds United, it is Felix because right now it does seem like a lot is entrusted upon him, so it's up to him now to deliver the results in the game tomorrow. So right now, let's discuss the predicted lineup. Now, it has to be one formation for me personally and that has to be 3-4-3. For me, it simply comes down to this. When you don't have Thiago Silva in your back line, I mean, this is a guy that leads out from the defence, that organises the defence, that gives motivation to his teammates that communicates and of course, you know, starts the first phase in our attack. In a must-win game like this tomorrow, it makes more sense to go for a safety first approach by using a back three instead of using a back four because you don't have Thiago Silva in that defense. So, so with my lineup, as you guys can already see, is in goal, that's going to be Kepa. In defense, I've gone for Jared Jalaba, Koulibaly, of course, Fafana, because who else can play in defense right now? But for me, yeah, it's about what positions in defense these guys play in. Uh, for me personally, 
I feel like Koulibaly could play on the left-hand side, but I think against Leeds United, I prefer to see Koulibaly playing in the middle because I feel a bit nervous when this guy leaves his defensive line and has to engage further up the field because he has a terrible habit this season of giving away non-stop fouls and penalties. And the last thing I want to do is give away sloppy set pieces and free kicks to Dortmund, a team right now that have been scoring a decent amount of goals from set pieces. I prefer seeing Koulibaly in that David Luiz role where he's sweeping up the danger but he's, you know, staying behind his defence. That makes me feel a lot more content and I'd rather have guys like Fofana and Trevor Jalabin, you know, Trevor on the left-hand side, Fofana on the right-hand side, of course, engaging with uh, wingers or 1v1 duels out wide. Now, wing-backs are obviously going to be Ben and Reese. Obviously, Ben has shown some decent overlaps down the left-hand side, but we're looking to play more down the right-hand side to free up the left-hand side, and Ben has been decent. Obviously, Reese James is touching goal tomorrow, but I kind of feel like with a game of this magnitude, you know, Reese James is going to want to play this because this could potentially be his last Champions League game. And knowing that Reese is playing in a more offensive position as a wing-back, you can expect some quality at least, even if he isn't like 100% fit. So now in midfield, it's an interesting one because originally I was going to go for Enzo and Mateo Kovacic. I liked that cover side a bit deeper against Leeds United. That allowed Enzo Fernandez to push up a bit more and influence the game a lot more, but the reason why I don't feel as confident about this decision is because of a certain Jude Bellingham uh, for Borussia Dortmund. Because this guy at 19 is a physical beast. Like I've not seen a 19 year old this mature physically. Uh, there was times he was giving Ruben like a real physical battle in that first leg. So for that reason, I don't want us to get overpowered. I think Ruben has to play alongside Enzo Fernandez, and I don't care if people think it's a favoritism thing. It's a tactical thing, and I think we need Ruben there for that physicality because that is going to be key and obviously up front I've gone for Kai Havertz on the left Joe Felix and I've gone for Raheem Sterling on the right hand side it does seem like Potter alluded to the fact that Sterling is set to play tomorrow he has been coming back and Potter has turned to Sterling quite a lot throughout the season Joe Felix on the left hand side I think that's the best way to use him right now and with that Leeds game you know Graham Potter gave Felix a lot of like creative license and freedom so he had plenty of opportunities to roam between the lines to take up different positions. As Porter said, he likes Joe Felix a lot because he can involve himself in multiple attacking phases in the game. So, as I've been saying, Joe Felix, a lot has been riding on this guy. If there was one game for him to really secure his future at our club, being the match winner, being the star guy in tomorrow's game, he is going to be so important for us. And obviously Kai Havertz, again, who else is going to play up front? We don't have any other strikers. Yes, I understand that in terms of finishing, it's been really poor, but I, I, I'm getting a bit bored saying this, but we have to accept the fact that he does other things like off the ball running, you know, holding off defenders, aerial balls, you know, important things like that, that no other striker can do. But Bamiyang plays on the shoulder. Fofana is a guy that's direct and plays more counter-attack. You know, we can't rely upon him to be holding off anyone. Kai Havertz is needed, so let's hope and pray that at least Kai can do his shift for the team because that's the most important thing I can expect from him at this point in time. So, as you guys can see, that's my predicted lineup. And now I'm going to end things by giving my match prediction. So, right now, I'm going to end things by giving my match prediction. And listen, I, I need to be hopeful, I have to be ambitious. I'm going for a 3 1 win. I will not be surprised if this game goes into extra time. I think it could be that tight. But with the quality we have on the bench, if the game opens up a bit more, and the fact that you know, Borussia Dortmund, even though they have a lot of desire and willpower right now, you know they are a bit open. They are conceding chances and opportunities. If we have the fans motivating the players and the players motivating the fans as well too, hopefully this atmosphere can create some tension for Borussia Dortmund. Um, you know, after that first leg, I don't fear. You know, after that first leg against them, I, I don't feel fearful. I think the only thing I'm fearful about is whether we can take advantage of opportunities. That's the one thing we haven't been able to do. But there's like a lot of desire for these guys to keep playing Champions League football. There's talks of remaining composed, you know, being confident, enjoying the game. And I do want to see these guys enjoy the game tomorrow. And I think in the Champions League, our football makes a bit more sense because it is a bit open. So let's hope that these guys can all pull through, the players and the manager, to help create an infamous comeback win. So you guys, share your thoughts and opinions, give us your match prediction and your predicted lineup. I'm in the FC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.